coming today. And uh, um, I hope we can have a lively discussion about the strategic plan. Um, this is a, our first attempt to have this kind of a discussion over Zoom. I know we've been using Zoom for a lot of things, but um, I hope we can get a buy-in and, and discussion from our members concerning the strategic plan that was sent around. I first of all would like to thank Ted for spearheading getting that done and his, his team of people for, for getting it to the point where we could actually circulate this and, and send it around to the members. What I'm hoping we can do today is have a discussion about in particular the Word document that he sent around, that was sent around, that talks about our strategic plan and looking at it from a very high level, this is an attempt to, to, to see where we want to go and to a lesser degree where we have been and what issues we wish to focus on. And I want to point out that um, every year the board of directors is responsible for making sure that we take and have an, an action plan or the activities that the, the KCOR organization is going to do that will address the issues that are talked about in the strategic plan. So with that, um, I'd like to open up some of the discussion. Oh, the other thing I'd like to say is more than my speaking all the time, I'm going to act more like a facilitator, especially if things get really busy and it's difficult to hear what people are actually saying. I'll act as a sponsor and make sure who gets to speak first, passing the baton, and I'll be doing that. So um, with that, um, I would like to say we'll get underway with respect to the document. Thank you, Art, for putting the actual document up. Um, I have received a few comments um, by email from people who won't come. And generally speaking, I haven't heard a lot of, oh my God, this is awful. Most of it has been people have felt that this was pretty, pretty decent. So with that, I'm going to open up the discussion. Does anybody have any comment about this particular document and whether or not this reflects what you think we should be doing? Well, Jean, if I could start, um, uh, my comment is more as an additional aspect that doesn't doesn't seem to be highlighted, and that is, um, if you adopt, if you accept the uh, motto "Think Global, Act Local," should we not be thinking a little more locally? Um, what what in, and I have no criticism of the overview of goals of uh, the UN and. Uh, the Club of Rome, which by their nature, their mandate's global, their view is global, they're not thinking of the local aspect. But I think a, a, an organization like KCOR should be, uh, as a Canadian organization, thinking of what can be done by way of action in Canada, uh, nationally, provincially, or locally in the, in the cities. And so, I didn't find anything in the strategic plan that made that link. Um, and perhaps if there's some way of adding that, um, either in the committees we strike, we could have, for example, uh, an urban uh, affairs committee or something like that, urban planning committee, um, or in the uh, deliveries, deliverables we have. And I think the climate adaption document we did, which I was happy to play a part in, was an excellent example of this because it talks about climate change in terms of impacts locally and what to do about it and building up resilience. Mm -hmm. And uh, I haven't thought it out beyond that, but I would be interested if others uh, agreed or had comments on it. Okay, um, Phil Riley, to you. Okay. In my reviewing of the document, the one thing that I noticed was missing almost universally everywhere was any mention of that third very important part that keeps us alive, and that is the food that we eat. There was no focus whatsoever on the changes of the environment to both the food production capacity and the actual impact of temperature and uh, humidity, no, rainfall on the pr uh, production capacity of land. And when you are thinking in terms of the things that we have to do to, in the short term, 
protect the long-term viability of our globe is look at what we're doing to our land and the food that we eat and think in an ecological sense because everything that supports us goes back to uh, viruses, bacteria, fungi, soil, moisture, and whatnot. Mm -hmm. Most people don't think of that. Uh, one of the questions you, you need to address is where you want to put this. I mean, both of these ideas are, are excellent. And, and should we choose as an organization to take on a specific project like we did with the adaptation? We might want to do one on, on urban environments. We might want to, uh, to do one on where our food comes from and what we better be doing about it. Uh, great idea. It can, it, it can appear any year. It probably, if it's not in the long list that we've sent around, it should be, and we can add it in as fast as, as, fast as we hear it. Uh, and the other catch is if you want it, lead it. Because it isn't, none of these actual action items from this broader perspective are going to happen unless one or more members decide to actually make it happen. And then this organization is there to provide whatever support we can to make it happen. One of the things that I've been doing within the last few days has been really zeroing in on uh, the uh, sanitation and food handling process in terms of the root storage project involved. And it took me to Cornell University where all of a sudden there was a whole new world in information available mm. on this subject. So that as time goes on, I'm uh, probably going to become more and more involved in that just because of my personal interest and the fact that it seems so difficult to get that information for the farming community or for the food distribution community. Great. Um, th there's nothing, I, I, I will interject at this point, uh, but Phil, once you, if you had trouble finding that kind of information, it uh, might be well worth uh, making sure that once you've compiled it and have access to some of it, that it goes onto our, onto our website so that it's more readily accessible to a lot of people too. Yeah, one and of the things- Also go directly to our members who appear based on their own presentations to know an awful lot. They could be sources of information and support for areas that you want to lead or that you want to see, you want further information on from their own experiences. Yeah, I was uh, benefiting from a little bit of learning process uh, two days ago when I attended a four hour Zoom meeting from Cornell. And all of a sudden I realized that I wasn't able to take notes fast enough in order to jog my memory later on. And then I re realized that, hey, if I use screen uh, shots, I could very quickly take a picture of what was on the screen and then later go back and file them into appropriate uh, folders. Mm -hmm. And so one of the things that I'm going to be doing with that is I'm going to be updating a, uh, a keynote presentation, much like uh, Barry Bruce gave, only focusing on these new pieces of information that I've uh, revealed. Perfect. Now mm -hmm. That's quite detailed and very specific about one area. And um, so I would like to go um, to Val Hume, you're next. Um, it's okay, thank you. Uh, I have just been checking. I'm, I'm obviously very concerned that women's perspectives uh, are included and they are included, but um, not with much emphasis. And I'll listen to the rest of the discussion until um, I have more to say. Okay, Art? I just want to say that the, the major takeaway message from yesterday is that yes, uh, we should be focused in on local decision making and <clears throat> that we should in, in fact um, be looking at going back to nature. Now, uh, this is the overriding theme that I got out of um, that uh, USA Corps Zoom meeting, and I thought was just 
just um, uh, perfect. It was right on the money. And that includes agriculture. This, so this is really picking up, uh, you know, what both Bill and Phil are saying. Um, <clears throat> and, uh, you know, you, I think the, the title of the, the Zoom meeting was You, you uh, Can't Breathe, Eat, or Drink Money. And uh, <clears throat> which, which is um, quite an, uh, an important theme. And um, uh, in some way, I, I don't know how we can do this, but uh, or or where the the document might reflect that. <laughs> but uh, I I certainly believe that is is uh, a major message, and and uh, uh, I I think we should be aligning a, a bit more with that as well. Uh, excuse me, uh, Art. Uh, on that point, uh, in this in the uh, strategic plan as drafted, there is a paragraph F on food security, and that particular section could be um, enlarged, if you want, to include um, urban farming. Or, uh, well, let me put it this way: Ottawa has more farmland than any other city in any other large city in Canada. Uh, I think it's about forty percent of our area is farmland. And there's a great focus on local markets, which uh, promise to not bring in stuff from more than 100 kilometers away. So there are links nas uh, globally, nationally, and locally on food security, mm -hmm. if you look at it, where we get our food from, which, which seems to me to complement what both Phil and I are talking about. Gabriella, you next. OK, uh, so um, what? Um, uh, I, first of all, I wanted to uh, to congratulate you for this this um, uh, document, the one that uh, you attach to the um, uh, the actual uh, strategic plan. It was very well written and much clear, very clear. Um, both 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 you and and Ted, very very well done. Um, there, uh, from my point of view, uh, the um, uh, values, um, I would want to say, um, I sort of echo what, um, what Bill said, I would like to um, concentrate quite a bit on our, uh, as much of the Canadian issues as possible. Of course, um, the there are general concerns that we can approach, and I've seen that. I mean, we can participate in some of the core, um, pr the project that they want to have and, and issue some kind of a written document in two years. But in the meantime, I think we should continue um, uh, pursuing our interests here domestically. Um, that's one aspect, and uh, and of course we are going to do that. We propose several several uh, presentations and workshops for next year, and even for next week we we have and and January um, a conversation on the first uh, <coughs> Reith Mark Carney's first two lectures. I think that would be interesting. I hope for mm -hmm. everybody to discuss. Um, the other one is about women, um, and Valerie mentioned something. Um, I think my comment earlier to you, Jean, was yeah. that um, within the body of, of the, um, I'm not sure what color it is anymore, uh, where the women was including un under other. And I thought maybe that doesn't quite look right. Uh, engage. Was it under engage? Uh, yeah, engaging it's up other. There right now, engaging Right, engaging others. other. And when you say others, women use native other. Uh, to me, it just doesn't feel right to have women under others. Um, I think we should say engaging women and then have another one saying engaging youth or engage uh, youth, natives, and others. I think women are already uh, part of a lot of activities. So it's just putting it together with others. It just doesn't feel right to me. That's my opinion. I, I, would, I would say that um, 
when you say engaging others, perhaps rephrasing it so that it's not as opposed to what? So um, basically engaging the population, anybody. It's engaging all people. And in particular, you might want to focus on women in one way or another, but that's just sort of a tale. I understand what you're saying. Right. It makes it so that there's uh, there's women or there's... Yeah. Yeah. So I, it's just a, a different way of, of approaching it. But you're right. I mean, that might be something that needs to be um, changed more so yeah. in terms of the approach and the title rather than the actual substance. Yeah, exactly. Because in, in many ways, we've actually already address this in um, with our presentations we've had um, um, well I don't know if we've had enough uh, topics that addressed the issue of women in other developing countries but we have had women present that made lots of presentations mm -hmm. that you know so okay if you, if you, if okay, you, think, if you think of the broad ones on the right hand side right now, yeah. uh, they are clusters of interest within which you mm -hmm. are at liberty to create anything you wish. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and they are not projects. We're not doing a project no, called no, well being versus growth, but one of us may wish to take on uh, and and foster uh, debates going on how we really define well-being versus growth. Right. The, our whole uh, we're we're advertising that yes we're interested as one of our main focuses in the in climate insure, uh, climate emergency. Uh, if that's the case, then in the next year years plan or the five year the, the third year plan, we can have specific projects focusing on that area. My, the biggest issue on this one is in that huge table, which we provided to you, we could not have one of each. Yeah. And, we, and because there's only 80 of us, there were only about 120 different topics suggested rather than uh, <laughs> for E, and we can, can't take a hundred on 120 projects. But the thing is, yeah. we are, re <laughs> of course, but we are relying on, on other people that we can bring in on a panel yeah. or on other discussions, right, from outside. Yeah. So we're trying to cluster the areas of interest enough so that people will get together and foster real projects that are worth doing within, okay. those, within those clusters. Uh, you should not also should not be married to those clusters. Right now, we've just changed the name of one of them. Uh, the one that is there uh, more recently uh, is Environment Conservation and Protection because it gradually got lost over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. And uh, there may well be one uh, uh, associated with food security, which is we've, we've just highlighted right now. Uh, the, the real challenge may well be when I give you, when I give you five, which two are you going to drop? Right. <laughs> That's really the trouble. <laughs> All right, Paul. <laughs> yeah. you're yes, up. Thank, thank you very much. And I do agree with Gabriella. And uh, as I've said in previous uh, um, meetings, and I thank you very much for, for including some of the things I said, is we do, we do have the uh, food security issue, of course, that you just mentioned. And that certainly is an issue when it comes to health and, and pandemics, or mm -hmm. just, just global health as a problem. Uh, the ecological ones and the environmental degradation are pretty simple. And then if we would wish maybe to change conflict and war to maybe conflict and, and human rights, and in that way, we can include um, women's issues, youth issues, social issues that, uh, um, that we have. And uh, I agree that if we have 120 different things, um, what do we focus on? And I think we focus on the things that people have expertise in and want to focus on, because mm -hmm. obviously we don't have, uh, you know, enough people to, to focus on everything. So with, with the three broad categories that I think the next generation faces, you know, uh, uh, being climate uh, conflict and, and uh, world health, um, we can we can fit almost everything in there, and in the conflict mm -hmm. and war one, uh, conflict and human rights, we can give priority to um, to women's issues. All right, uh, David, did you want to uh, make any comments, or because you just made 
Is there anything else that you wanted to say, David Paul? No? I have something, a uh, comment here to follow Paul's. Okay. Y yeah, so I, I guess we, um, uh, it's 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 good to actually uh, the um, maybe we can think we have priorities. Do these priorities say for example for 2021? Do they um, match anything that is? Uh, we should have a lot of them that match the priorities in Canada. Well, that's that's the next step. Once we've agreed that this strategic plan, as we've set out. Um, actually um, covers the basis, then we have to get an action plan with the activities that we're going to do. So that's sort of the next step. But yeah, we can certainly make sure that the focus is on the, 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 on the Canadian world. Yeah. Okay. Um, John Hollins, next, please. Thank you. Uh, I want, want, would like to talk about membership. Uh, I don't know if uh, Art, uh, Ted, I've, I've got a couple of slides on Art's computer. I don't need them instantly, Art, but if you could put, find a way of putting them up, that would be uh, fine. Look, um, I want to reiterate, a, make a point that Ted made a few minutes ago. Um, I've been an active member of KCOR for ah, something over 10 years. The membership has always been between 80 and 100. We're 80 something right now. So for every member of KCOR, there are 400,000 other Canadians. Um, I've been very critical of the federal government on its targets for reducing emissions of greenhouse gases. And the brunt of my criticism is that the Canadian government did not have a clue what it was doing when it set those targets and still doesn't know how to deliver them. Um, if I take that to KCOR with a hundred members and a shopping list here so long, it, 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 there's a disconnect here for, some, for, for, for me. Um, and the one thing that is not mentioned uh, in this strategic plan is anything about what's our plan for membership? David Pollock, uh, just a few years back at a, at a board retreat, launched a wonderful idea. How would we cope with, I think it was 10,000 members. I don't remember the exact number, but it, think way out of our box. Should we not have something in our strategic plan, which gives an indication as to where, where we want to go in the in, simply in size of membership, and then how we would go about that. But there's also an aspect of membership that, that is, another aspect of membership, which is not acknowledged here. And that's what does KCOR do for its members as individuals or as small groups? And I just want to put, I've taken two quotes off of the off of KCOR's website under membership. Uh, a member can expect and experience friendship, dedication, goodwill, <laughs> openness, ethical decisions. Sheila Murray was, and I'm sure is still proud to be a member. Next one, please, Art. Uh, our late colleague, Yasmin Ascarelli, put it this way. As a new member of this dynamic organization, I have found an alignment with my life purpose by integrating the skills of other KCOR members with my own and, and, and blah, blah, blah. Being directly involved and watching it come to fruition is very rewarding. I have to tell you that being an active member of KCOR has been a boon in my life since I retired. If I wasn't coming to KCOR, I would have to go find somewhere else to devote uh, my limited ability to think and talk and argue and learn. Um, I've 
I, I, I think we need to know what it is and declare strategically what are we setting out to do for our, all our members? And do we want the membership to grow or are we quite, quite content to have it stable in the band of 80 to 100 uh, members? And so I think when I get to the end of the strategic plan, which is a, is, is a, a useful update from the previous two, we certainly need this, but when we get to the shopping list at the end, it's simply far too long. One of the points I make when I'm telling somebody about KCOR is that we have members from a huge range of disciplines. On the phone call today, we have members with academic backgrounds and professional backgrounds from anthropology to sociology. And I sure wish we could recruit, recruit a zoologist so that I can make that appear. <laughs> you have <laughs> one. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> sorry. Oh, oh, part of no, my training. Uh, sorry? That is part of my training. Oh, all right. Thank you for declaring that. I'm sorry I didn't know that. <laughs> and you're uh, having an ecologist. And, and so, and so uh, I, I would love in the, when we get to what is it we're going to do to be able to focus in on just two or three lead matters. With this breadth of membership, that may not be not possible. And so maybe our primary job is looking after our members because realistically, we're, it will be sheer, we may have some very good things to say, some very good research to share, we're not going to, our chance of really making a difference in the big wide world is actually very modest. And we probably ought to recognize that, which is not clear in this strategic plan. And so I would encourage shifting gears to say, why are we, why are each one of us here? Is it because we want to talk to the prime minister or is it because we, we find it a valuable part of our life? Most of us being retirees. Sorry about the long talk. Okay, okay, um, next, Bill Riley, you've got some other comments to make. Bill? Just an, I'm unmuting myself here. Oh, okay, <laughs> yeah. fair enough. Yeah. It has to do with uh, land use planning. Many years ago, I ran for council in West Carleton and it was at the time that there were all kinds of road signs that were erected by farmers that said, back off government, this land is mine, with no consideration that, no, this land is not only for you, you are using it to earn your income, yes, but there is a grander purpose of uh, land ownership than making a profit, return on investment. Even today, as I noted in my chat message, there is a huge amount of deforestation taking place along the Carp Road for a farmer that obviously wants to be able to get equipment that is used on the prairies into the Ottawa Valley so that he has the ability to usurp the production capacity of the land to what he feels is the most profitable. Somehow or another, we have to be able to influence our policy decision makers at the municipal and provincial level in terms of how to plan adequately for future needs, not for the landowner's needs. I would like to respond very positively to that, Phil. For uh, close to 25 years, I was the head of land use planning for Canada at Environment. Um, my doctorate is in land use planning around the world. <laughs> Uh, we have sort of shifted gradually to the notion of broader infiltration of other uh, uh, departments to try and at very least not have them ruined what, uh, what is there being used by us. And I think your uh, point of getting back to it, the most, most of the most successful positive human and, uh, and urban and rural development is very local. Uh, and so many of the arguments people are making regarding sustainability are up there 
uh, essentially politicians arguing with each other over uh, over policies and principles, but the actual delivery is very very local. So when uh, I guess my my summary is that when we get on to actually creating specific projects involving ourselves, uh, let's make them very low, some of them very, very local focused. Because what we found when we did the adaptation strategies that, was that people could see the benefits for themselves and the efforts for themselves. It was all happening in the same place. It's been a lot harder to sell that globally where other people benefit and we pay. One of the comments that I would have about uh, individual actions is that each elected person has the opportunity to gather together local citizens that have expertise in order to influence or advise them. Um, I have to say that I have never offered my, uh, my interest to a local politician, but maybe it's time that all of us within KCOR begin to think outwards of how can I be most influential one-on-one -on -one with a person who's making local decision making. Good point. Okay, Mary Higgins, you're up. Or Higgins, sorry. Hi. Hello. Hi. Hello. Go ahead, Mary. Can you? Okay, sorry, I, I didn't think I was on. Um, yeah, I'd like to pick up on, on what just Phil Riley said and Bill Pugsley and a few others about um, taking some of the wonderful research ideas, proposals of KCOR and really getting it into the local, not only conversation, but decision making. And I'll just give you one example. There's a three hour um, get together tomorrow called the People's Official Plan. And Phil, you'd be very interested in this. And there's um, people from across the city that are have been quite involved in the rewriting of our official plan, which is well underway and are sorting out um, a bit more on the difficult conversations tomorrow and trying to find the balance for the very bold actions that we need locally. And so it's all related in this case to land and development and development on shorelines and whatnot. That is just one example. And um, when we state in the strategic plan, engaging everyone or engaging others, I'm wondering if one of our goals for the coming year is to have others wanting to engage us. And in order for them to do it, they have to know about our pathways uh, documentation. They have to know about what we've been learning from each other on Wednesdays at 1.30. Um, some of this information would be extremely valuable. Uh, I think of Bill Pugsley and all the work he's done on local air quality or tried to do on local air quality. Uh, and um, there's a group now that has just come out with a new study locally on Breathe Easy and have identified areas in Ottawa around air quality and certain um, contaminants that affect public health. I think this is very timely to do a collaborative project with this group and using their data and their conversations with communities on air quality. Um, so these are just two examples and there's many more going on. Um, the city hall is just has a big climate change master plan and there's really different points of view. And so to pick up on the, one of the goals of CORE, it's to facilitate these difficult discussions. And I think we have a lot of wisdom and a lot of knowledge and a lot of reports that would really help people if they knew they existed 
and how they could include us in their conversations. Thank you, Mary. Uh, Jeff Passmore, you're up next. Sorry, Jeff. No, I didn't see your hand. I, I, I apologize for that. Uh, no problem. Thank, thanks, uh, Jean. Uh, very briefly, uh, first of all, I need to apologize for not having spent the amount of time that I might like to have spent on looking at this strategic plan. Obviously, a lot of work has gone into it, and thanks for the, uh, you know, for the authors for that. Um, but when I was reading through it, <clears throat> I was left with the question, what are we actually going to do? And this is a little bit of uh, reflecting the comments from John Hollins. Um, and I, of course, as, as you read through the document, then under activities, it said the board following consultation with the membership will determine substantive priorities for each year and then set them out in an annual action plan. But um, so if this document is meant to be sort of a preamble to the board to decide what we're actually going to do, it poses a real challenge uh, to the board re uh, what those action items are going to be. I mean, I heard someone say, you know, maybe the priority areas are climate, food and conflict. And those sound like three good ones to me. But it would be really helpful to me as a board member if people could direct their comments to the sorts of things that I think we're supposed to be thinking about uh, at the board meeting on Monday, Gene, which is what are we actually going to do? What are our priorities? Well, you're, you're right, Jeff. I'll, I'll, I'll sort of step in at that. And uh, um, we have this, because of the pandemic in the past, what we have done is we've actually had um, in-person sessions with people that would discuss a lot of this in some detail. That's certainly how they did it uh, five years ago when we did the strategic plan at that point. So this is the first attempt to try and do it online through Zoom. It's, uh, it's cumbersome to a degree, but I hope it can help uh, a lot of our members um, at least feel that they can express their opinions. And, and I have had some people send their comments directly to me. There's been one or two um, who weren't able to come today and they've expressed their opinions to me. And they're not too far, the comments that I've heard have been not too far different from what people are expressing here right now. The question I've got is um, more less, less along the lines of trying to put together the action plan, I think there's, I'm starting to see some consensus here that what are the main areas of interest in terms of general topics, then it's a question of trying to put together what are we going to do next year and, and with the resources we've got and the people we've got, and that's up to the board to decide. And yeah, we'll start talking about that at the next board meeting, which by the way, has been transferred to the 21st because some of the people can't be there on Monday, so. We should also look at what worked in the past. Mm -hmm. This general approach was done before where we came up with the very long list and then tried to narrow them down. And mm -hmm. after that, based on a more or less emerging consensus, we defined projects like the adaptation manual, like the pathways, which is very soon going, you're going to see more about it because it's just, it's now been uh, first draft is being circulated to the team and that'll happen very shortly. Uh, when we actually created a website and it's functioning and where we actually created a values committee and it's functioning, uh, these were all the action outputs from this kind of process mm -hmm. where we, and uh, and we agreed at the time that uh, we had something like a climate emergency even then, which is why we had the pathways and the adaptation strategies. Uh, I think it's still at the top of the list and we can argue with the others. Uh, we don't, by the way, have to uh, necessarily uh, have them all in the right order. Uh, we probably will not end up taking them all on, but at least at this stage, we're identifying that collectively, we believe they're important enough to maybe develop action items, projects, and outputs based on our, our capacity. Okay. Thanks, Ted. John Hollins, you're up. What, the way I w begin to approach Jeff's question of what are we actually going to do 
is to look back at what we actually have done in the last uh, five years. And there's what, two or three really quite remarkable things to reflect on. Um, the first thing is that about four years ago, uh, a new website was launched. It's much more powerful than the two that went before it. Um, it has eight widgets, eight every Saturday morning. And I hope you all do this over the weekend. You go visit CanadianCore.com every Sunday morning or Saturday evening. But please go. There's a wealth of stuff there. And it's absolutely extraordinary that the eight widgets have been refreshed every week for almost four years. That's a huge enterprise by a relatively small number of people uh, and there's always room for other people to help. One of the questions that was has been asked frequently over the years is, at least at the board, what, what could we possibly do for members of KCOR who do not reside in the Ottawa area and therefore are not in a position to go to the monthly luncheons uh, unless they happen to be passing through or visiting family. We now have an answer to that question, a phenomenal answer. We have weekly Zoom talks. Most of them have been given by members and some guests who've been invited uh, by members and the caliber has been extremely high. The couple maybe sort of missed the mark, but it's something like 25 or 26 talks so far. Far, I haven't missed a single one and hope I won't miss any of the others. That's, this is a phenomenal enterprise, engaging a little more members than they're engaged weekly in, 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 in the website. Uh, we've We've, and we've also, through our collaboration, which has happened in the last two years, agreements, uh, first of all, with the um, uh, Canadian Meteorological Society, and then very similarly with the group of 78. So we've got all kinds of good links and good stuff for our members and any guests uh, to watch. So those are things that, and those things were, uh, are, are certainly fall within the strategic plan that was adopted five years ago. But frankly, they didn't depend on the strategic plan. They it depended on the initiative and cap capability of a relatively small number of members, which is why I want to come back and focus before we get through with this strategic plan and invite the board to think really seriously a bot about what this club does for its members, is it, is it just dreaming? Is it delusional to have a shopping list as long as the one as we have at the end of this one? And, 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 uh, and, and can we choose just one or two or three points of focus for whatever we do? Now, we said in last year, in, last, in the previous strategic plan, that we would facilitate projects proposed by members. We've actually done one of those in the last couple of years. It's called the Pathways Project. We were frankly, in my estimation, a bit slow getting started on that topic. Um, th there were a couple of things in that pro project that happened in a timely manner. Um, the analyst did all the research in the space of four months. David Pollock, serving chair at that time gave the first presentation just one month after that. That was May of a year and a half ago. We're got, probably going to get a full-blown report on that uh, within a month or two. <clears throat> we are very slow. Our, there's something about does KCOR have the machinery to do what it wants to do? And I would say that my experience in that venture is that we're, we are barely equipped to do it, certainly barely equipped to do it in a timely manner. And that should be, uh, that's part of our history that should be borne in mind uh, the next time we decide to take on a project. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, um, John. Uh, David, Pollock, you're up.
Hello, David. David Paula. We have on deck is Peter Mankey, but uh, if David can come in, I can't see him yet. I'll send him a, a, a chat. Okay, Peter Mankey, you go next, please. Okay, thank you very much. I take a few minutes, if I may, to report on something that's been going on. We uh, entered into a, an agreement with the group of 78 to cooperate in a number of things, and I've been one of the links. The latest activity there that, uh, in fact, I was just involved with is something called the Climate Legacy Project. And uh, we had a meeting of people from across, well, first of all, the purpose of this Climate Legacy Project is to engage seniors from across Canada, locally in local organizations, in issues of climate change. And um, we had a meeting from people across Canada to look at the new website that's just being launched. And the interesting theme, the, the, the sort of way this website is working is along this, answering this question for seniors. Uh, if a senior wants to know, for example, what can I do? Which is what we're talking about. And it's divided into three areas. What can I do with my money, my time, and my advocacy? So there are three areas in which this is going to be focused. My money is going to be in terms of uh, your investments and how you can make money uh, to my time involving, and we're all short of time, as you know. But one of the things that I really want to share with you is they are going to put in this website some very specific examples of how thing how they can do things. And uh, I'm going to be approaching Phil and Art and, and Gordon to help produce just a very short uh, piece to put on that website. For example, what Art is doing is geothermal. That's one thing they can do with their money is to, to try to do that. And what Phil is doing with his gardens and so on. So there just this is I just put this forward as an example of how KCOR can work with other. This will be now world uh, Canada wide and uh, with a lot of lot of smaller organizations that will be involved. Sorry to take so much time, but I think this is a really important initiative of KCOR. Thanks, Peter. Good, good comment. Um, David Pollock, are you back? Um, can you hear me now? Yes. Oh, excellent. Yes, my microphone was on an entirely different system. I'm not sure how it got there. Um, I was going to say that I sometimes have disagreements with John Hollands, but on the point of membership, I can't emphasize enough how strongly I think that is something of importance. And just thinking about the limited time that I have, I would like to offer a project to work with several other people, not an unwieldy group, to really focus on and try to make suggestions of ways and means by which we could interest and enhance our membership through both partnerships and direct membership. One of the people that I, work with is Michael Krakowiak, who's also our webmaster for KCOR, uh, our at least art supporter from a technical point of view. And um, Michael knows quite a lot about social media work. And I know that where I work, we had done face-to-face -face workshops with maybe 20 people. And the last workshop we did online was with over 300 people. And so, Obviously, that's something of a success. And I think some of those same methods could be used if we had maybe a half dozen people within KCOR that would really like to focus on membership, because ultimately all the other issues about how effective we can be um, are going to depend on the energy that we as members bring in an entirely volunteer run organization. So I'd like to volunteer my time in, into that area and see who else wants to join me. Thank you, David. That's nice to hear that somebody's stepping up 
to take on a role for one of these things. That's great. Uh, David Hutton, you're up. There you go. Can you hear me now? Yes. Good. Okay. Uh, just building on what's been said, um, a couple of points. One is that um, the you could think of this planning process as being, a, a, to some extent, top down, or the board is going to make some decisions. Uh, from what John just described of our past successes, it seems to me that what actually happened is something different, which is that within our very rich and talented membership, someone steps forward with an idea uh, and a commitment to do something that attracts support from others, and, and away it goes. And I think, maybe I'm wrong, John, but some of the things that you mentioned there, it seemed to me that was basically how things had happened. Um, and I think that um, that's probably where things are going to happen in the future, because uh, what we've got is a very rich pool of talent for someone that has some energy to do something and would like to have some support and collaborators. So it's almost like a kind of Darwinian process that the best ideas and the most capable people uh, <laughs> come through. So that was one comment. Uh, the other comment, and we're talking about our membership and how it's you know, been fairly static, is that um, one of the things that I think has happened that we're still trying, not perhaps fully recognizing, is that our, ge our membership base has no longer got anything to do with geography, or it's got very little to do with geography. Uh, we've seen people, membership applications from different uh, countries. Uh, we've got people visiting our website from all over Canada and probably from other countries as well. And uh, the presentations that we're giving on a regular basis, anyone can take part in. So um, I, I think we can almost kind of forget that we're, well, there's advantages in being in Ottawa. We're, we're, we're near the, the levers of power, but in terms of who we can attract to take part in our efforts, uh, the world's our oyster. Yeah. Thank you, David. Um, Mary Higgin, I'm sorry, I, I missed you and Art in the list. So Mary, you're up and then Art next. Um, yes, uh, I think uh, in terms of what we can do for our members, picking up on John Holland's question. Uh, I can say that I am so certain that our individual members have taken thing, things away to their other life, their act, maybe more activist life, um, from the discussions and the learnings and the fellowship of KCOR. Um, I can say I certainly have, um, but KCOR, I don't think, has been tracking that. So you don't even know through us as individuals what your impacts are. I think the question today is more, does KCOR as an identity rather than Mary Hegan or John Hollins or something else um, want to be um, a partner in in collaborative projects and, and advocacy groups in terms of the important decisions we feel have to be made. Um, so I just put that out because uh, KCOR I think has indirectly maybe been influencing more than they're even aware of. Um, secondly, a suggestion to the board if there's a commitment in our action plan for next year that we might um, want to work collaboratively as KCOR on one or two issues locally, even do this as a pilot project, then put a request out to existing members to write up um, a, a project proposal as to how that might work and just pick two or three different areas um, to, to start our activity. Actually, I think that if we do work with some of the local groups that are well into the issues that KCOR talks about all the time, um, people might naturally 
want to become members of KCOR as well in their process of working with us. And you're doing it now. And Peter just put out another offer to join and uh, to do a joint project with another national organization. So those examples are starting to roll in. Um, so I think between doing a few local projects and a few national projects, we could really build on the excellent work that we've been putting together. Thank you, Mary. Art? Well, I'd like to say a couple of things. First off, collaborations. Absolutely collaborating in, in every way we can. And that increases our, our, our outreach. And we've been, uh, frankly, quite successful in doing that uh, since the uh, last five year uh, plan. And, and <clears throat> however, I do want to point out that each time that we go and, and say we're going to work with the group of 78 or CMOS or whoever, and, and all the agreements are in place then all of a sudden, who's going to do this work of collaborating? And, and inevitably, quite frankly, that's fallen on my shoulders because nobody's stepping forward. And so we're, we're back to the, the issue of who's really going to do the work, other than saying, I can be the, the great organizer. But then once that is done, there's an ongoing commitment that is required to keep the collaboration going. And uh, I have found that over this period of time as well, that the people who step forward and do the work are, are but a handful of people. And I'm saying there's five or six. And each time a a request for assistance goes forward, uh, there is one or two of those five people step forward and take on more of the load themselves. Um, <clears throat> so somehow we're going to have to try and get our membership uh, willing to participate at, at more than just a discussion level. There is absolutely a, a requirement for implementation energy and right, we, i don't know how we can put that into the into the the uh, plan ted but it's it's something well, art we need important. to look at resources the club of rome has a hired staff of five people for the same number of members that we have and quite frankly i think this year we've done more significantly more than they have uh, so it, it is a different business model completely. Uh, the uh, one or two of the other clubs of Rome have significant uh, funds coming in from billionaires for pet projects. Uh, we unfortunately have not cultivated very many of those, but uh, it, it all comes down to choosing those projects where we can make the largest difference without blowing our good people away. And the one who right now has had, I think, the, by far the hardest workload is Art. And we really don't want to wear him out. <laughs> yeah, I, I would echo that, Ted, and, and say we're doing our best to try and see um, um, try and see what we can do to ease his burden. Mm -hmm. But uh, with that, okay, Phil Riley, you're up next. Phil? Yep, just unmuting okay. myself again. Excellent, thank you. Um, in, in terms of uh, what we call it, un unrecognized benefits of members relaying things from KCOR, um, I don't know how it would happen, but for instance, every once in a while, I will post some of the postings from KCOR on my own Facebook page. And I have no idea how to alert or have recorded the fact that I have promoted KCOR intentionally, but without sort of without without any uh, record of it happening within KCOR's uh, record keeping. 
don't know how you would fix that. And uh, going back to um, a long time ago, when I was head of pollution probe here in Ottawa, there were a number of different uh, professional organizations that were looking for a report on what it was that, it, that we were undertaking. And it gave opportunity to go out and speak to groups, even to the point of doing Sunday uh, sermons at churches, speaking to Rotary clubs, speaking to uh, boards of education and whatnot. And I haven't seen that type of outreach from KCOR happening. Okay. And comment. Okay. Um, thanks. I do know that um, anybody who ends up going onto our website, it is counted, but we don't necessarily know from what direction they came from. Am I correct on that, Art? Yeah, and, and, and I think uh, everybody should be encouraged to do exactly what Phil is doing. So we yeah. don't have to keep track of how everybody's individual um, <clears throat> networks are being exercised and 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 spreading some of the the material that, that we've posted or or a Zoom conference or, or what have you. Um, what is I mean ultimately we do have a measure of that and that is the number of hits that that come on to. Uh, our website and we got statistics on that and I can see it grow over time and from time to time I I post some some information on that so everyone gets as it were a, a snapshot in time as to where we are but uh, there's there's a lot of good information that says our outreach is growing okay thank you John Hollins you're up Golly Moses, I keep bouncing back like a bad penny. I'm sorry. Um, Art's observations um, lead me to think of something else which I feel should be in the strategic plan. I've talked about membership, but I think we also ought to have a sense of succession in the people who run the show. Art is the number one, of course. And, uh, and, and he's made a plea in recent time uh, for other people to pick up where members who initially contributed weekly to the website simply had had enough or, or wanted to go do something else. Entirely natural. Uh, but what about the succession of the key positions? Maybe that's not something for, the, for the, the strategic plan itself, but it sure should be on the agenda of the board at least uh, once a year. Mm -hmm. Ted made an interesting point just a moment ago. He pointed out that the Club of Rome, the International Club of Rome, has five hired hands. <laughs> we have one small contract with Michael Kay. Um, We've never thought about raising money. If you want to raise money, you'd have to have a really well-written proposal that was bounded, I think, not something as general as, as, our, as our strategic plans, the last two and this, and this one. But if you want to do something like that, uh, we're not going to do it at $60 a year per member. Um, you'd have to raise funds. When we started the Pathways project, the target, the price we agreed to pay was $8,000. And the board notionally said, okay, half of that from the assets of KCOR and half by fundraising. What actually happened was that we raised about $2,500 by fundraising and 1,500 of that was from two individual members. We didn't really do a fundraising. What we did was pick up on a thought that, um, oh gosh, uh, John, uh, John, uh, John, blah, 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 John down on the uh, on the St. Lawrence uh, threw out at a at a lunch, um, I think in April of 2019. That hey, how about some of us? chip in another 60 bucks and that was done it, somewhere between 10 and 20 people did that um, 
But, you know, amongst our membership, we have a, a proven fundraiser. His name is Paul Koch, uh, former executive at uh, IBM, uh, founder of the Enviro Center in Ottawa, founder of the Ottawa Sustainability Fund. Uh, we have a little bit of talent there. We, if we want to go down the track that Ted mentioned the Club of Rome has done, not nearly as far and not nearly as wide a track, we, we should be strategically thinking about money. We're not doing it. We haven't done that. And we're not doing it in this strategic plan. Uh, without fundraising, with fundraising, if we could come up with some uh, just one compelling proposal, we, we would obviously start with our membership, but there are other places that one can go. And one in particular is the Community Foundation of Ottawa, uh, which is now 26 years old. It has assets of uh, well over $100 million, and it dishes out something like 5% of its, of its assets every year in, in grants. It, would, it has bemoaned on many times in recent years how few good environmental proposals it gets. If KCOR wanted, had a really sound idea and wrote up a persuasive proposal, and there are several of us here, a, a small team of three or five KCOR members could put that together and then go present it. So it, it, this, this, is a, this is a notion which is not in the strategic plan, but it's, spot, it's prompted in my mind by what Ted said about the Club of Rome, which has gone through some very difficult financial times during the 20 years that I've known about it and is now doing very well in terms of getting things done. Okay, thanks, John. Dave, and Dory. One thing you should note is we're, we are actually advancing towards the annual planning process. The strategic plan generally identifies broad directions. The one thing that has not been core to what we've done up to this point is how on earth are we gonna get there from here? Uh, the operational plan, the, the hiring of people, the firing of people, the, you know, what we do. Uh, and that really is the next phase. Uh, up to this point, we've been talking about what we want to do. And we are now moving in the stuff I've got on, a lot of it in the yellow is uh, therefore what we have to do next to make it happen. Dave Doherty, you're up. I'm just trying to look at what Ted was. Um on the shared screen. Asking us to see yeah. little hearts, a little small on my screen, but anyway. Um, so I've, I've listened to the conversation go in many different directions. Um, it seems to me that a lot of the discussion, especially about particular topics that we might investigate is premature in that we haven't established what I guess I could term strategic directions. And this was really brought to light a moment ago when it was pointed out that we don't have any external funding and CORE does. If you look at other organizations with whom we might partner, many of them do. Organizations, for example, like the Sierra Club, they're always raising money. Um, they're even they're even selling things like T-shirts or whatever to raise money, and they have permanent staff. But there's no discussion in the document at the moment as to what do we want to be, how are we going to become that, and um, I think we really need to think that through very carefully. It needs to be included here before we go saying it ought to be we're looking at this issue or that issue or this set of issues or from this perspective we need a more fundamental examination of what do we want the organization to be maybe it isn't the same as it was 10 years ago i don't i don't see that it was recorded 10 years ago but i wouldn't be surprised that it's really changed now um 
So I, I really think we need to do some rethinking and rewriting uh, so that we're not overlooking major areas. Um, and I think it's very dangerous for us to expand the, the list of things that we want to do um, without knowing how we're going to get there. Thank you, Dave. Madeline, you're up. Yes, I'd like to just uh, follow through on what Dave just said. We need to, uh, I don't think it's so much we need to look at what we want to do. I think if we look at our mission statement, I think most of us would be in agreement that that's what we want to do. We still want to go in that direction. But it's the way we used to do things before before uh, our use now of the internet and, and our, our e-communications have changed the situation completely. When the initial committees were put in place, they all came up with uh, what were their terms of reference. And in their terms of reference, they said, we will do this, this, this for Cape Corps. And then we followed through on what we had put there. So that was one way of Cape Corps assuring that there would be someone to do these kind of things. Now it's, um, it's very different because the program committee has changed uh, uh, in, in many ways. It, it seems to have just moved into uh, the presentations that are given on our website. And I applaud that. I think it's attracted a lot more people, but it is, it, now the work has shifted. And I think that in a strategic plan, the, uh, um, the, the association has to, to decide this is what, we, we think is important. This is what we think we want to do. And then we get people who want to do something in that area and do it. There are more and more people uh, becoming members who have uh, done a lot of thinking and a lot of writing in different areas. And, and we can use some of that expertise in the things that we need, but we don't know what we need until we look at the situation as it is today and say, okay, what of our old structure was good and what in our what is the structure that we would need now with uh, the situation in which we are? And that will be easier than to decide, okay, then we do need this or we do need people that, that pay. And rather than to go to the Sierra Club, we can just ask the group of, of uh, 78, how, what allows them to pay for one person, you know, who's doing a lot of, of work in preparing their conferences and their presentations and they, they, they do things uh, on, online. So um, I think we can ask with the, with the associations we're already partnered with how they're going about it. And um, anyway, that was just uh, my comment on what was said earlier and what Dave said. Thank you. Thanks, Madeline. Um, Rob, Robert Hoffman, you're up. Uh, thank you. Uh, I've been observing for a while, <laughs> for yes. many, for many years, perhaps. Uh, and uh, I, I guess what I observe about the strategic plan uh, is that is very reductionist. Things are broken up into, you know, individual topics of various kinds. Whereas I, I, I think what what the Club of Rome and what KCOR is about uh, is the interconnectedness uh, between all of these issues. And it seems to me that that notion of, of seeing a broader whole uh, in a way has gone missing. Uh, and on points that, uh, that John and others have raised, it's, it's very difficult for a board to, dis to prescribe uh, areas that we should pursue uh, in the absence of, in, in a sense, volunteers uh, who are willing to take some initiatives. So I would kind of see this as more oriented towards a board facilitating uh, uh, individuals or groups of individual members, perhaps augmented by external resources. Uh, to, to undertake various projects uh, and, and then in some sense 
it's up to the board to, to vet those project proposals, eliminate some because they're not sufficiently on, on uh, uh, in coherence with the mission of the organization. Uh, and accepting and supporting others. And in some instances where uh, uh, some kind of project funding is, is, uh, is required, then the board uh, can facilitate to the extent that it can, which may not be to a great extent, uh, 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 trying to support uh, external funding. Some of it from within the members because members have capacity to contribute to, some members have capacity to contribute to projects that they deem to be of particular interest to them. Uh, and some projects may have appeal to, for support from other organizations, whether it's financial support or some kind of collaborative support is, uh, 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 or both are possibilities. Anyway, that's about what I had to say. Thank you for your indulgence. <laughs> Thank you, Robert. That's, uh, yeah. that's helpful. Uh, just if I may have one comment, uh, Robert is quite right. Uh, when we came up with the original list, it was about as reductionist as a list you could get. That's why I just flashed it on a minute ago. I mean, I mean, dozens of pages of individual little things. And our, our, our trademark is virtually being holistic and integrative. Uh, and admittedly that many of the small projects uh, are, are fun, you know, do, doing something like uh, straightening out the water course on your property. They are not what I think, and it's also a very good thing to do for, for the same reasons, but I think we have a comparative advantage of bringing a number of different gray cells together to come up with more holistic approaches. And I would support Robert in that. It doesn't mean that we don't do individual components because they're within individual capacities. But I think we've got to always try and retain this more holistic approach of trying to make a difference. Okay, there's uh, at the moment, there is nobody else who said anything. And, and so I'd like to sort of summarize a little bit about the notes that I've written down as we've been going through this. The key things that a lot of people have pointed out that really don't show up clearly in this strategic document, especially with regards to membership. Um, I, I know that it starts off at the beginning with some, I, I hesitate to call them motherhood statements, but, but um, really focusing on the membership question that we've got. And along with the membership question is, um, succession planning and how we're actually going to be operating. And as Madeline pointed out, operating into the future in this new world that we find ourselves working in. So we need to do some navel gazing on how that might happen and whether or not we need to restructure certain um, committees and how we actually do work. Then there's another question about, do we want to be strictly a volunteer organization or one that actually goes out to do fundraising for particular projects? And again, it comes down to resources that we have and need. Um, and I, this, I think this document does a pretty decent job of focusing and, and, and setting out what areas of interest there are, but not necessarily how are we going to do it? So that's the real question that I've got and maybe looking at the membership, looking how structure might be, how to facilitate that might allow us to sort of clearly see how we're going to achieve some of those goals. Gene, the last time we got about to this point, about five years ago, or maybe 10 years ago, we were playing strategies. Uh, that was the time when we pulled small groups together to fight out the mm -hmm. actual delivery, the logistics. And in fact, uh, the board had retreats back when we were allowed to be within 100 yards of each other. Uh, so <laughs> it did help. Uh, it's a little better doing it over wine, but nevertheless, we were able to sort of sort out the logistics of delivering on the ones we chose to prioritize. And we're roughly at the same point in my, in my uh, opinion now, where we got to do something like that 
to define what we really do over the next year if we generally buy this as, a, as roughly what we're trying to do. Um, are there any other comments? I mean, I, I, I think Ted's right, but I, I think Madeline is also quite, quite right in saying, you know, in the last five years, there's been massive change in the way mm -hmm. in which people communicate and, and yeah. actually do things. So, you know, social media and all of these other things, things have mm -hmm. radically changed and we need to make sure that we can still respond if we wish to do that. Or do we want to become more um, <laughs> insular? I don't know. So I, I, comments. Yeah, modernizing K course structure. That <laughs> something. Yeah, I'm seeing you putting that in there, Ted. Any other comments? Did I, was, I, I was uh, just a quick one, if I may? Yes, go ahead, Gabby. Uh, um, I just want to say, uh, yes, I agree with uh, K course trademark, a uh, holistic trademark, uh, with what Robert said. Um, mm -hmm. And, um, uh, uh, but I do find the table that was prepared very useful because it gives ideas, it gives suggestions, it gi it's a little bit of a guidance for us where, you know, what, what is there available? What, what can we actually engage? Can we engage, do we meet people uh, that are interesting that might want to give a, a, a discussion? Oh yes, they are on that table, they fit in. Mm -hmm. So um, I, I think it will be useful for most of the members to kind of fit in some ideas. Any That's other all. comments? No? Well, um, can I just uh, follow up on what Ted said about, you know, the different consultations we had done uh, after the first strategic plan? Right. Uh, we had had a meeting of the full, uh, as many KCOR members as, as could to participate, which I think you're doing today, which is wonderful. And then the other one was to look back at those who had been in KCOR before in leadership positions. So we sort of went and got, I yeah. guess what we would call the, uh, uh, what did we call, uh, call them? We called it elders. <laughs> The elders. Use the term elders to not offend people. The elders. That's <laughs> I just, it, because that was interesting. And then there's another group now that I think would be interesting to, to uh, hook into is that not all KCOR members have stayed as KCOR members. And I, I believe uh, um, Phil Riley mentioned this, you are part of another network. So, mm -hmm. you know, people who have, who sit on a board of another committee, but are really truly dedicated KCOR. Like I'm thinking that I'm on another board and they know very well, you know, what my philosophy is and what we're looking for at KCOR. And it's, it's of real interest. And some of the people who were part of, of, uh, of that group, I got to go on to KCOR. I know that, that um, uh, Sheila also is on another board. So, but we're not the only ones like the, uh, I know that uh, uh, many other people on KCOR are part of another board. Now, maybe we could send out an invitation to them and say, okay, uh, those who sit on CMOS, can you be part of, of a committee if you're on another board and you want to give some input on how a KCOR should be structured or function, or do you have, maybe they'll bring us into uh, some 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 ways these people have of, of of doing things that will be insightful for us. So here's here's some other people we could tap into that would be another group. So we could identify different groups that, and then come back, or maybe not come back, just make a summary of what they said and send it in, and then that could be sent to all KCOR members who don't want to come to a Zoom meeting or can't come to a Zoom meeting. They could read it and they can comment. Thank you, Madeline. Anybody else to put out a, any comments? I, I, may I? Certainly. <laughs> um, I, I think one of the reasons why we've been able to maintain such a, a rich and, and continuous activity of presentations is because we are a network of networks. Each of us has a huge network and it's, it, 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 we have been able to maintain that. 
And yes, I agree what uh, Madeleine suggested is a very good idea. I think we, we are all part of so many other networks and organizations. Okay. Take, certainly take that forward to the board, especially you know, for an action plan to look at how, how as an organization we might modernize. That would certainly be something that we'll have to do in the next year um, and, and see what we can do. Because certainly this past year has been a dynamite under a few butts like my own to change radically and very quickly. And boy, did it make a big difference. The Zoom presentations in particular have been uh, um, just a, a phenomenal thing. So we know, we now know each other way better than we used to. Yeah. Uh, and for many years, we just showed up to drink and, and to exchange political gossip. Uh, we now have some projects. We now talk to each other with quite some frequency. Mm -hmm. Well over half of our members have been uh, been regularly zooming, uh, even even if they don't do it all the time. Yeah. So we we've sort of tested possibilities, and therefore the next time round, at least this year, we have a a fairly open slate to figure out how to do it better, and some fairly good examples of how maybe we can. Mm -hmm. And the other thing I'd like to say to all the members that are here, um, uh, Art Art and I have have tried to put together some of these videos that explain to, to people how to access the website, how to, um, you know, what is on the website. And uh, because I, I went with the perspective of somebody who, you know, I go on and look at the website and I didn't know how to access information that was out there and so on. So we're trying, Art is leading this dummy through, you know, this is a KCOR for dummies and I'm the dummy and, and the test case for it. So I encourage you to look at that. And I've learned an awful lot about how important the widgets are, the database that sits behind all of the stuff that's there and how to search it and find stuff of interest. So I'd encourage you all to, to take a look at those and to, to really use the website a little more effectively than you have in the past, because it just, it, it really, I hope that that can be one of the vehicles that we can use to make this work better for everybody. Do I have any other comments or, or questions? Is no? everything in the yellow worth keeping? And what do you want us to do with it? <laughs> well, some of it we'll take back to the board, Ted, definitely. Yeah. So we've made a few suggested amendments through the text. Uh, I take it that we probably, it's worth adding third security or some permutation of it to the list of areas of interest. I think that all of these logistical issues need to be foddered, foddered for the next step uh, when we actually try to develop a, an action plan for the coming year. Mm -hmm. And most of the other stuff that I've been writing down right now will be addressing in one way or another. Uh, you, do you want another version of this to come out with a few changes in it? Well, I think we should. I do. I do know that I discovered a few, which which would be uh, editor not editorial, but they would be like grammar things, and you know, a couple missing periods and that sort of stuff. So yeah, we'll have to put out. Yeah, we did document. that on purpose to make sure everybody read it. Yeah, I did, Ted. I did. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, that brings this part of the hangout session to a close. And now everybody 